Welcome everyone to today's video. We are not only playing here with old vintage stuff. Today we are doing an AMD Ryzen build because our servers are getting slightly old and we are not wanting to buy Macs anymore. Anyway, as they are also old new stock, as you know, from Apple. So one of the first PC builds in quite a while and AMD Ryzen. And also I already wanted to build Ryzen last year, it's the first gen Ryzen, but somehow Amazon never listed the mini ITX board that I wanted to have. And they somehow still don't. So this is not from Amazon, it's some German IT supply thing. So this is not a paid advertisement, Exa code paid this in full. And if all goes well, this should become the next gen server nodes here. Can we warranty void if removed or? Okay. This box Ryzen with this AMD fan. I only hope it fits into the case. Yeah, this might get a little bit tight. We have to see how we fit this together. I'm a little bit surprised with all the thousands of memory timings nowadays. Somehow back in the days it was slightly easier. I can only hope that this is compatible. With all these compatibility lists and everything, it's not the most easy to check what works and what doesn't. And also I find it a little bit unfortunate that everything is gaming. I don't feel really reassured having server nodes with gaming motherboards. So I also got here some not as gaming memory. Let's hope that all works together. As I said, my first PC built in actually maybe four years or so. Short interruption later, not only did I run out of battery in the camera as usual, I also had to buy a cheap entry-level graphic card because we do not have a single PCIe card in the office, only in the G5 and Mac Pros. So they are obviously not PC bias compatible. So I got some 50 dollar euro card here. Um, I could have gotten one for 40 with only one gigabyte, but I thought if I once use it a little bit for something, the 10 dollar euro are well spent for another gigabyte. I could have got a more powerful card, but I don't want to leave it in there as it's a server. So it's only for setting it up. And I was actually considering to get a more powerful card However, I was not sure if it fits in the case, in case I need to leave it in there, because I actually could not find a single information on the internet whether this modern PC BIOSes will actually boot in my headless Linux server without the VGA card installed. So let's see how this is going. As case, we are using the Silverstone case, where I earlier already prepared the hard drives here. Some months ago, in the earlier videos, you can go back to those and take a look at them. And here we got some cable clips uh, screws, more screws, and yet more screws, and a CD manual, and some stupid voucher for something. And here, don't really think we need manually. I hope. Thank you for purchasing. You're, you're welcome. And here is the uh, connection stuff. And this should actually be pretty straightforward. But then again, I've not done this in many years, so let's see how this is going. And for those who are playing along at home, you obviously only want to do this with some ESD strap, right? Let's unpack this. Hmm, no, no warranty label thing here. So that's a nice mini ITX board. Installation should be easy. Cables we can use later. Serial ATA. IO shield. Uh, something. Whatever. Um, I will probably plug in the bare minimum and try to power it on just to see how it's going. The one corner appears to be there. 
goes in like this. And the memory, I got two times 60 megabyte. Let's hope this really works and is compatible. All this 500 million modules irritated me a little bit. So this is DDR4 3200 Intel XMP 2.0 ready, 1.35 volt. And there were, obviously ideally I would want ECC, but they are a little bit too expensive to test. And like this. So they were also more expensive, higher clock and excess latency modules. It's actually pretty tight there, the memory, but whatever. <clears throat> and this board should have, I think, two M2 slots there and some separated audio sections that they advertise as better, but we don't need this for the server anyway. Here, yeah, so then mostly the fan. So it looks like for this type of cooler, we need to remove the screws and what do they call it? Brackets there. CPU heatsink and fan assembly. So for this type 2, we are supposed to remove the screws and retention module only. Do not remove the plate on the bottom. So let's do that. So then the question is where is the plugs are here? Was there a manual for the screws? I wonder how far AMD wants them in. Hmm. Okay, doing this the first time I find this a little bit inconvenient. As I'm using a Ryzen 2700, it obviously doesn't come with integrated graphics, so we can't use this integrated HDMI port there as it is intended for APUs with integrated graphics. And so CPU fan, probably this one. And due to that, we need this dedicated GPU. Some cheap entry level. And I hope I can later use the board without this after setting up the BIOS once. Power supply simply goes here. No surprises there. Some, some external 12 volt thing. So it should be those two. And then graphics. And keyboard. And I think this is supposed to work. Memory, CPU, power. So the oh here's the so the power button is then let's see if this boots or explodes. Well it has some LEDs there. Some LEDs here, I hope that is a good thing, although it is should be right off right now, I think. Yeah, okay, we have a colorful server then, I guess. Hmm, thanks God we are hiding this in a black case. We have something colorful, but not a VGA post. Let me check. Okay, <clears throat> obviously works better with the DVI plugged into the monitor. I don't really like that it's done by all these LEDs are glowing, but that's what you get using consumer grade hardware for servers. Okay, the post actually took a while. Now it's there. Why does this post take so long? Hmm. So a new CPU installed. Please enter setup. So ASUS ROG Strix X470i Ryzen 7 2700, 32 megabyte. I guess that looks mostly okay-ish. F1. 
so we have not yet blown it up and colorful graphics bios um, Somehow the clicking is a little bit off, in my opinion. This CPU fan, however, is extremely quiet. Rock effects. Mm -hmm. Even had an Intel on controller that supports, in my opinion, quite nice for proper Unix drivers. Okay, let's plug in my portable SSD and see how the booting goes, and then certainly also. I hope we are lucky to fit this AMD cooler into this mini ITX case. That is the beauty of this portable SSD thing. You can plug it in most AFI machines and just boot. So that's a maximum of penguins. There are two, four. So there are some penguins missing though. So in contrast to Windows, we are just up and running, obviously. So nicely many CPUs. Let's re-emerge here, exact image or so for the background picture. I recently had to tinker with LibJPEG. CPU is 40 degrees and uh, actually the surprisingly the Radeon graphics gets quite warm here. Passive cool 60 degrees. Hmm. But the CPU is only 40. So let's merge exact image. Need a new parallel here. We now have 16 or so. Here 16. So emerge and let's see how long that takes. The real test will be compiling the kernel anyway because the uh, all module kernel of T2 takes some. Um, probably 30 minutes or so on a decent Xeon from yesteryear. So immediately nicer, so camera is quite bright anyway. <clears throat> so far so good. I will now load this into the case and hope the huge fan fits into the case there. And then we hopefully have a nice new powerful server. Uh, also need to stick some M2 module in there. Of course there are plenty of other creators on YouTube that build PCs, but I wanted to give my Linux focused server take here with this kind of gaming hardware. And also mini ITX are not that often also show all the Apple users that building your own PC is usually super easy and you get way more powerful and up-to-date hardware than this outdated stuff Apple is still trying to sell. So as a first ability test rebuilding the Linux kernel is always a good idea as a start. So mod posting should be over quite soon. But all the other benchmarks we will run another day in another video. So this apparently was in 9 minutes, which is pretty fast. From 13.46 to 13.55. So that's quite neat. And now we will build it and screw it into the mini ITX case. 